Hello everyone and welcome to our A to J Author New User Training. My name is Jessica Bolak frank and I am the Program Coordinator here with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. And just a couple of things before we get started. All attendees are on mute. If you want to ask a question, just raise your hand or put your question in the question box. Um, if you're calling in today, make sure by phone, make sure to enter your audio PIN. And the, se the session is being recorded and might be posted on a to jauthororg or on our new YouTube uh, channel, youtube.com slash a to j author. Today's session is on jazzing up your a to j guided interview, adding audio, video, and graphics. On the agenda, first we'll be discussing audio, then show me videos and graphics, and other options for putting graphics into your guided interview as well. A little introduction to um, audio in A to J Author. You can add audio to questions, question prompts, learn more answers, not the learn more question, not the bubble that the end user thinks, but the actual answer that the avatar guide gives. You can also add audio to pop-ups. All audio clips must be MP3 files currently. And um, the file weight and by file weight, I mean the total package for the A to J guided interview. The, everything in the guided interview, all files attached, the audio, the video, the graphics, that's what I mean by the whole package, the file weight. For A to J, cannot be over 100 megabytes. However, LHI restricts that file weight to 16 megabytes when you're uploading um, to their server. So there are some software tools to change the quality of video and audio to make them smaller. But it is something to think about. Um, some long A to J guided interviews can be quite extensive in their file weight by themselves, just with the, the text. So um, before you go and record some really awesome audio clips, make sure that you're keeping an eye out on that file weight. Um, to add audio to an A to J, it's pretty simple. There's um, standard sections everywhere that there's text, except for the learn more question. Um, there's a little icon, a little section for adding audio. So it'll say audio, it'll display what clip is in there, um, and there'll be a little yellow folder. Clicking on the yellow folder is going to open up a um, open up your desktop file, and you can search for the file that you want to add that way. And um, for this section, make sure that you have that you create individual audio clips. You don't want to create one large audio file. For the whole interview, you need specific individual clips for each section. You can also listen to the audio clip once you attach it to make sure that it's the correct um, audio clip by clicking on the little arrow between the audio field and the yellow folder. How does audio look to the end user? So the interaction between audio and the end user is uh, it's pretty customized or it's pretty um, flexible for the end user. When you add audio to the guided interview, it's going to play automatically when the end user gets to that section. However, the end user can turn off sound completely. That's what's circled at the top here um, where it says sound is on. If they clicked that in the navigation bar, they could turn sound off for the whole guided interview. They can also stop the sound just for that specific section. Um, that is this section right here, right above the avatar. You can stop audio just for that section. And for each section, uh, each clip, the end user can play or pause it, rewind it, fast forward it, and control the sound the volume for that specific section. Um, let's go to A to J and look how audio actually works. So I created an A to J guided interview for this section. Let's go to the questions. And the first section that I have audio in is the first screen. So my audio is welcome to A to J author. As you can see here, I have audio and it's showing what specific clip I have. If I wanted to change it, I could click on the yellow folder. It's going to take me to auto all of my audio clips, and I can choose which one I want. I can make sure that it's the correct one by clicking play here. So it is. 
Um, I, I hope you all could hear that. It just said, welcome to A to J Author. Simple as that. I can add in more audio with my Learn More Answer section. So I can browse for audio here as well. Um, it's really helpful if I, cre if I created a pop-up here. So underline shows that I have a pop-up. I click on it. I can add audio to the pop-up as well. Here's what it looks like to the end user. So it played automatically. The end user can play it again, can pause it, rewind, fast forward, um, all within it as well. I could also turn off the sound right there, and the whole thing goes away. Sound is on, hit play, and it starts again. So let's go back to our PowerPoint here. How to record your audio clips. So the first thing that you want to do is print a script of all the language that you have in your guided interview from the reports tab in A to J Author. Um, this is a pretty neat software tool or software section that we have. It prints, uh, gives you a list of every single word that's in your A to J guided interview. So for the interview I created, I pulled a report. Um, it pops up in Internet Explorer, but you can always just copy and paste it into Word. You know, highlight everything, copy and paste it. But it gives you the text, what's in the pop-up, what pop-up it's for, the next question, the different um, macros you put in, the words, everything that you would need to create specific little audio clips for each thing. So, um, like I was just showing you, this is the script. Um, something when creating audio clips that's important to remember is to choose a naming convention that allows you to easily identify which clip goes with which question. So you'd hate to come to A to J, open up, click the little yellow folder, open up your uh, file folder and see that there's 20 um, different audio clips. You don't want to have to listen to each one to make sure it's the right one. So if you come up within your organization a standard recording naming convention, it will help you and those working on your guided interview um, keep very organized. Just a simple naming convention that we've kind of come up with here with A to J. As you can see in the script, it's step zero, colon, one dash introduction. So this is step zero, the first question, and the name of the question. I would label my audio clips some the very similar to this, oops, sorry, very similar to this, um, name here. I would have it 0-1 introduction. Um, to let me know that this pop-up, I would have 0-1 pop-up A to J author, because I could have multiple pop-ups with multiple audio clips needed. And this would tell me that I'm on step zero, question one, in the pop-up, and that it's the A to J author pop-up and not something else. For the next one, it would be 1-2-name, one, uh, one dash dash that kind of thing. This way, you very easily have all of your audio clips organized. Also with audio recording, there are many free programs out there on the web for recording, editing, and converting file types of audio clips. You don't have to purchase a very expensive audio recording software to make it work. With our students that we teach here at the, at the Chicago Penn, I've actually even used my phone, recorded it um, with whatever recording software comes on my cell phone, saved it, and then um, plugged my phone into my computer and was able to use it from there. It worked perfectly. It was actually really high quality, so that if you have a smartphone, that might be a, a really good option for recording it. Also, make sure that you're in a quiet room, that you aren't going to be distractions, you hate to have to keep recording it, those kind of things. So if you have any questions on audio, feel free to raise your hand or um, put them in the question box, and I can get to them. If not, I'm going to go on to um, the Show Me Graphics. Okay. Not seeing any hand raise, so I'm going to go on to Show Me Graphics. Show Me Graphics allows you to add images to your Learn More sections to assist your end user. So what I've added here is a picture of a form, and it has a section where I could tell the end user, here's where you need to sign. 
here's, I could circle a section and say, here's where whatever my question is asking for, you can find it here. Be it a W-2, here's on a W-2 where you find your income. Um, here's where you need to get this notarized. So this is really helpful to kind of give your end user more clues about what they need to do next or where to find information. And it's really an underutilized option here. Both the Show Me graphics and the Show Me videos are very underutilized um, in A to J Author, and they could be really helpful for your end user um, to take it that one step further to clear it up for them. You can also add videos to A to J Author. This is our standard odd gopher clip. Um, and just like the graphics, they pop up in the Learn More, or they are in the Learn More. Um, unlike audio, video does not automatically play. So the end user um, isn't just shown the video when they get to that screen. They have to click the Learn More button, and then the video will automatically play. To add a graphic or a video, um, you might not have noticed this section in A to J Author, but it usually is displayed with just text. Standard Learn More just is going to have text in this little text box here. Or if you click this arrow, a drop-down menu will show up, and you have the option of just text, show me graphic, or show me video. So you can add those. Um, once you click show me graphic or show me video, a file uh, path will show up. You can click on the little yellow folder and again browse for the specific clip that you need. Um, after you have chosen the show me graphic, then you can I said click on the file and find which one you need. However, unlike audio, you cannot preview it before um, you add it to your interview, so you would have to just go into preview mode and make sure that it was the correct clip. Again, naming conventions would help you here as well. You can add captions to your graphic or video by simply writing text in the question field, or the question help field in the learn more answer section. So just um, like a normal Learn More, you can have text. So the video could be, this is what you'll see in the courthouse. Or um, if you had a picture of a document, you could say, look you know, look at the red circle for where you need to sign. That kind of thing. Further helping your end user. A little bit about the graphics and video parameters. Um, graphics have to be JPEG, uh, .png, or GIF file. Video file types have to be .flv, that's flash video. Um, as we transition to the new software, um, or to the new version of A to J Author, it's not software, it's in the cloud, um, that may be changing, but for right now, it has to be a flash video with A to J Author 4. The size, however, is not restricted. Graphics and video are scaled to fit within the Learn More window automatically. And the end user can always enlarge the graphic or the video by selecting the full screen icon. Also, with as with audio, there are many free programs out there for editing, resizing, changing file types of graphics and videos. So if you have questions and want to learn more about the software um, for resizing that kind of stuff, definitely reach out to the listserv. There's somebody out there who's done this before that has an awesome free program. Don't waste your program's uh, money on kind of editing software. You don't need it. So we'll go back to A to J Author and we can check on some videos. So I have, um, let's see, I think I have one here. Oh, let's click on questions. We'll walk through to show you. Turn the sound off for you. I've already kind of been here. Okay, so here is an example explaining just the text in a Learn More. No graphic, no video. This is your standard Learn More. If I click Continue, A to J Author allows you to add graphics. You can have anything here in the um, end user's think bubble, their question. And then here, this has automatically been resized by A to J Author. Here's I added text, sign this form. And if the end user can't quite see it, this is kind of a hard one because it's so large that when it's resized, it's quite small. But they can always click full screen, and the whole thing pops up. 
they can see specifically where they need to sign. And they can always go back to normal size. We also have, if you continue on here, it is your author allows you to add video. And here is our video. Click learn more. And our odd little gopher pops up. The end user can always rewind, play it again, reduce the volume, and go full screen if they want to see it. This is kind of a, a bad video, but it's just an example that we use to show video. Okay. Again, if you have any questions on video or graphics, let me know. Uh, but moving on to branding logos. So these are other options um, for adding pictures and graphics to your A to J guided interview. A to J allows you to have an optional branding logo um, to add your specific program's logo to the bottom right corner of your A to J guided interview. So here we have Chicago Kent's logo, um, but if you wanted to give your end user some continuity, um, it can be confusing for an end user sometimes to go from your website, they click a link, then they're taken to LHI's website, and then within LHI, once they agree to the terms of use, they click again and they're taken into A to J author. So that can be very confusing and they might not know if they're still with you. One way to do that is to add your organization's logo to the bottom. To add a branding logo, you just click on the interview tab here. So generally you're working in the questions tab, but an option is the interview tab. Um, and where you would put a description of your interview instead with the logo graphic again. So field, click on the yellow folder, you can browse. So I will take you back into the software to show you that. We go into the interview tab. Here we have the logo graphic. I click the yellow folder. I can browse for it. I have the Chicago Kent CK logo, the A to J author circle logo. Click that one and change it. Go to preview. You can see that the A to J author logo is now here. If I went back out, changed it to Chicago Kent logo. Preview. Now we have the Chicago Kent logo. One thing to note on logos is the image size. It's 120 by 120 pixels. If an image is not to the size, it will be scaled to fit, causing distortion. So if your image is smaller or not square, you can add white space. Um, and for a better image quality, scale down a larger image. Okay, we had a question. Um, the question was, is there a size on sound recording? The size limit on sound recording? So, no, there's not technically a limit. The parameters for sound are, um, for A to J, the whole package, the whole file weight has to be 100 megabytes. Um, that includes the, the text of the A to J guided interview, any audio, any video, um, and any graphics. So, um, your, everything, the whole package has to be less than 100 megabytes. Um, however, if you are using LHI, their limit is 16 megabytes only. So um, that can be a little tricky with sound or adding graphics. Um, and it seems to be why one of the reasons why the, these tools are underutilized. But um, their whole package has, the whole file weight has to be 16 megabytes. So if you have a long interview, um, that can be an issue with audio. So um, I hope that answers the question. If you guys have any other questions, feel free. Um, to answer, uh, to ask me those in the question box or raise your hand. Um, back to the branding logos. File types for branding logos have to be uh, JPEG, .png, .gif, or .sfv. Um, to see all file types in a folder when you're trying to select which image, you can just type the star, the asterisk, dot asterisk, and it'll show you all the options. Or you can search, search in your file specifically by those file types. Okay, so um, the next option for branding is the end graphic. In A to J Author, you typically have the courthouse. 
that's what's going to show up in most interviews um, that's appropriate, that the end result for the end user is that they're going to go to court. However, there are circumstances where you use A to J Author for informational um, interviews only, or online intake, or e-filing, no, e-filing will go to the courthouse, but online intake, information only. You might not want the courthouse, that might not make sense for the situation. So you can add your own logo at the end and it shows up more as a billboard. So on the right here, I have an example from Legal Aid of Western Ohio. They use A to J for online intake, um, and this shows them the end is that the end user ends up at the legal aid. To change the end graphic, it's the same place as um, you would put in their front logo, um, except that it's end graphic. Change it the same way, click on the yellow file folder, and it'll pop up a list of options. So I will show you in A to J how that works. So again, we're in the interview tab. We're in my interview. Right now, I do not have any end graphic loaded. So the default in A to J is the courthouse. Um, if I wanted to edit that and change it, I could go to my end graphic, click my little yellow folder, and I can click on whatever um, graphic I wanted. I open it up, and it changes to Legal Aid of Western Ohio's sample, um, the billboard. And the closer you get, this looks a little distorted, um, here, but the closer you get in your interview, the better it'll look to the end user. So if we continued walking down the path, the closer we're getting, the better it's looking. And the end user understands that they're getting closer to the destination as well. For um, end graphics, there are a couple um, parameters for them as well. The end graphic is kind of big. It's 900 by 250 megapixels, so the width is 900, the height is 250. Um, if an image is not to size, it will be scaled, sometimes causing distortion. If your image is smaller, you can add white space. So for the end graphic, the whole background um, of the interview, all that white space, is included in this 900 by 250 megapixels, uh, or pixels, sorry. For better image quality, again, scale down a larger image for these specific restrictions. File type restrictions, .png or .sws. And um, as I mentioned before with the graphics, there's awesome software out there for free that you can use to change your file types. Um, another thing to note is alpha transparency. Um, you, want, you don't want the backup, background of the graphic um, to cover up the horizon or our roadway. So um, I'm not really uh, the, the tech person for graphics and that kind of stuff. But um, when you're doing it, there's like a checkbox in when you're doing the um, editing the graphic to check alpha transparency. To help you get started with your own end graphic, if you would like, you can go to a to jauthor.org and download our a to j author starter kit. It comes with two sample end graphics. One is a PNG, one's a dot swift uh, sample, and the template graphic includes a sign with a logo and text that can be modified. So you can switch out your logo, switch out the text. To edit it, just open it in Flash or Photoshop, leave the size alone, don't adjust it, um, make sure to save your graphic for the web, and make that selection for alpha transparency. Um, but this is just an option. You don't have to have a graphic. You don't have to add an end graphic. If the courthouse is fine for you, A to J will automatically put that in. So um, just a note about upcoming trainings. Our new user workshop is the first Thursday of each month. Our first uh, advanced user form is going to be in two weeks on March 21st. And it is also on the third Thursday of every other month. You can register for all the trainings on a to jauthor.org. Since you guys are here, you're already registered for the new Users 2013 series. You'll be good to go every month. Are there any questions? Feel free to raise your hand. Um, and I can help you with those. If you have questions on a specific project, 
feel free to read those as well. Okay, so any questions? Nope. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Um, if you do have questions, always feel free to email me or call. Um, here's my office number and my email. I am available, you know, all the time. Oh, we did have a question. Um, the question is, how many folks use A to J and not LHI? Um, well, really, we don't know how many. Um, we only get the statistics from LHI. Once you download A to J Author and um, you have the viewer, you guys can host it yourselves. Um, I think it's a small number of legal aids and uh, a couple courts are the only ones using A to J without LHI. But it is an option if you don't want a document produced. If you're doing online intake, um, the court's doing e-filing, anything like that, you don't need to have um, it hosted by LHI. So that is an option. If you guys have further questions about that, feel free to reach out to us. Um, not seeing any other questions. So just a big thanks to Callie for letting us use their go-to meeting services. And I will see you all next month. Thank you.